Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be discussing the molar heat of combustion. So we're going to define what we mean by the molar heat of combustion. We're then going to look at how we measure the molar heat of combustion experimentally, looking at the, the principles behind what we call calorimetry. And then also how do we calculate the molar heat of combustion based on the information, the data that we can collect in experiment, and going through a sample calculation. So what do we mean by molar heat of combustion, which we give the shorthand of delta HC. So the molar heat of combustion is the amount of energy that is released to the surroundings, it's given off during the combustion or burning of a substance for every mole of that substance that burns, or for every specific amount. We do talk about it per mole and also per gram, so we can measure out by mass. So the idea is, because we're thinking about this in the context of fuels, that we want to know how much energy a fuel is going to give off when we burn it. So we can actually compare different fuels and say, well, hydrogen will do this, whereas ethanol will do that, and octane will do this, and diesel will do that. It, it allows us to compare things on a level playing field so that then we can make decisions about what's the most effective uh, fuel source. And so, because, because one of the things we, we remember is that combustion reactions, by their nature, are always exothermic. Exo being out of, that is energy going out of the, the system to the surroundings. Um, and so therefore, we, they always have the, a negative enthalpy change. So delta H, the change in enthalpy, always is negative because the system's energy decreases. But so what we do is we say, all right, well, combustion's always exothermic, therefore the enthalpy's always negative. So if we're gonna define a particular type of enthalpy change of specifically for combustion, then we say, all right, let's turn that negative enthalpy into a positive number. So the, the negative, we take the negative sign of the enthalpy change, and so we say, therefore, that's the heat of combustion. So it only applies to combustion reactions. We don't just do it to any old number, but it means that then, because the numbers would always be negative otherwise, we've now just turned them into a positive value defined uh, specifically about combustion. Okay, so that's just some of the terminology there that you might, when those numbers are expressed as a positive number, when actually the system's energy is going down. So how do we measure it? Well, here's kind of a, 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 a sample, kind of really simple illustration of, of the technique that we would use to measure um, the, to, to, to actually measure the, the heat of combustion. So we have a, uh, have a burner containing a liquid fuel, or any, well, as long as there's any substance underneath here that is burning, then we can measure it using this way. We, in the past, we might have done it with a candle or we, don't, we also do this sort of thing with burning food samples. But at the moment, we're concerned more with liquid fuels like propanol or ethanol. So you have this liquid fuel inside this burner, which is basically like a, like a, ca like a candle sort of setup. It's got a wick that then we light it at one end and it draws liquid fuel up through the wick and releases and, and then burns here. We have a can above that containing a, a known mass of water. So in this diagram, the, the illustration contains 200 grams. Doesn't really matter exactly how much, as long as you know what that value is. So it could be 100, could be 300, but as long as you know the accurate mass, um, then you can still work. And of course we have a thermometer because what we're looking at here is saying that the energy released during combustion, the energy released as this is burning, is all being absorbed by the water. So the water is absorbing that energy and we can use a thermometer to quantify how much that energy has gone into that water by looking at how much it increases in temperature. That's the, that's the, the goal that we're looking at here. So we're looking at all of the, the thermal energy going from here into the water. We can measure the change using a thermometer and then calculate how much energy was involved. We're using a retort stand, clamps and all that to hold these things in place. Now, one thing this diagram doesn't show, which is always a best, best practice, is to actually have a, another clamp holding the thermometer so it's just resting in the middle of the water rather than touching the bottom of the can. Why, you might ask? Well, we have a nice metal can and metals are very efficient thermal conductors. And so if the thermometer is touching the bottom of the can, it's going to be picking up energy from the can as well as the water. So we might get an artificially high temperature because it's the energy is going directly into here rather than only by being picked up by the water. So that's the best way to do it. Okay, so the water temperature will increase and we can measure the temperature change and that will help us to work out um, how much energy the water absorbed. Okay, using Q equals MC delta T. Okay, so some of the values that we, and we'll come back to that in a sec. Some of the values that we need, 
we need to know how much water that we uh, is absorbing the energy. Okay, because the mass of the water, the amount of water that we have, will very much affect how much its temperature goes up by. Because one gram of water will go up by a very different amount to one kilogram of water. We also need to look at the mass change of the liquid fuel in the burner. So weighing how much it is to start, how much it is at the end, and therefore looking at how much it's decreased by. Because we need to know that so we can say, well, this much energy came from this much of the fuel. And likewise, we also need to measure the initial temperature, the final temperature, and then therefore the temperature change, or delta T. Okay, so we're gonna use Q equals MC delta T as the formula to look at how much energy goes into the water. So this is a formula that we've seen before, but just reminding you about the different parts. So the Q is our thermal energy released in, measured in joules. M refers to the mass of our water. C refers to that value called the specific heat capacity of water of 4.18. And delta T is our temperature change in degrees Celsius. Okay, so multiplying these three values together, C being a constant, then gives us the amount of energy that was absorbed by the water. Okay, and therefore how much was released by the fuel. All right, and then what we do is then we wanna say, all right, well, let's look at that relative to how much of the fuel was burnt. And we can do that two ways. Firstly, we can look at it in terms of how many moles of fuel was burnt. So looking at how much energy was released divided by the number of moles that we burnt. So kilojoules per mole. We can also do it in kilojoules per gram. So dividing the amount of energy released by the mass in grams. Okay, and so that way we can, we can look at the heat of combustion in both of these uh, sets of units, depending on what we need. Okay, because often a question will ask us for both, or we might be looking for one or the other. All right, so let's have a look, quick look at an example. So two grams of butane gas completely combusted in a calorimeter, so one of, a container that does the, the, the measuring the heat, like, like we had earlier which contains 500 grams of water. So the temperature of the water rises from 25 Celsius to 72.5 Celsius. Calculate the mole heat of combustion of butane gas per mole and per gram. Okay, so we're gonna use both of those formulas we just referred to. So firstly, Q equals MC delta T. This is the formula we need to look at. How much energy came out of the fuel and then went into the water? So 500 grams of water with this constant value and its temperature change was the difference between those two temperatures. So we get a value of 99,275 joules. But what we're going to need is we're going to need this value of Q in kilojoules because we're, that's, that's ultimately the unit we need in the end. So we're going to divide by 1,000 or times this conversion factor of one kilojoule for every 1,000 joules. So we get 99.275 kilojoules. Notice I haven't rounded anything off yet because I haven't achieved my final answer. So now what we're going to do is with this, the question, we're now going to turn that into mole of combustion per mole and per gram. But we have to work out how many moles we have to start with. So we had two grams of butane, so we can times that by one mole for every um, this many grams for the, our formula for butane is C4H10. So we get a value of 0.0344 moles with some extra decimal places. Keep those places in your calculator when you do the next step. So in terms of kilojoules per mole, we need to use this value and divide our Q by our N, our number of moles. And to three significant figures, we get 2,890 kilojoules per mole as the heat of combustion. Kilojoules per gram, the formula of the approach is faster because we just take the Q that we calculated previously, divide it by two grams, and we get 49.6 kilojoules per gram. Okay, so we've taken the value, looked at the energy absorbed by the water, looked at that then as coming out of the fuel and worked out per mole, kilojoules per mole and per gram. Okay. So just to recap, we defined what we mean by molar heat of combustion or delta HC. We looked at the experimentally how we can measure it using a, a technique called calorimetry, measuring the amount of energy absorbed by a sample of water that after, from the burning of that fuel. We looked at the formulas that we used to calculate it, so Q equals MC delta T, and then Q over N or Q over M, and we went through an example. All right, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.